it mean for business from your point of view? From my point of view, Darren, disruptive marketing is getting a viewer or your audience to deviate from their current activity to engage with your mission or brand. I mean, to stop whatever activity they're doing and, uh, and, and pay attention to whatever your messaging is at that time. So as a man who watches the trends, sees what's happening now and where things are headed, give us the lowdown. I mean, disrupt our current thought process with the truth about how business is changing. Well, what's interesting about the way things are changing is, is really personalization. Um, as technology evolves, we have access to more data now than we've ever had before. So it's really, it's, it's our privilege to, uh, to use that data and send a message to a specific user at a specific time that's most specifically relevant to them. So the world is evolving from general branding, mass marketing, uh, you know, put an impression in front of 15 million people and hope that 100,000 of those like it. We can now, uh, understanding more about the interaction with consumers that are out there, put a message in front of the right people at the right time and, and really influence what their behaviors are, what their actions are. So there are a lot of disruptive technologies out there today, and I know that you and your company focus specifically on the use of mobile marketing. So explain how mobile in particular is disrupting business and more specifically the marketing world as well. Well, mobile is exciting, but it really, it right now it gets grouped into such a very large category. Uh, I've actually had somebody come up to me once and said, hey Alex, I, I need some mobile marketing. I'm um, like, it's a product, like it's a carrot. I need a carrot. Uh, what we realize, it's really just a concept of being able to reach people anytime, day or night, anywhere they are. And what's facilitated that obviously is, is many computers that's in everybody's pocket these days. So when we talk about mobile marketing, it's more of a philosophy of understanding that we can reach people anytime, anywhere, as opposed to waiting for them to turn on the TV or uh, open up the newspaper. Um, now we know we can ping them and reach them and actually create a call to action whether they're sitting in the dentist's office or in front of the TV or you know, even in the movie theater before the movie starts. So we as marketers have to understand that mobile is giving us an incredible amount of power uh, with which to reach and influence what people are doing. But uh, you know, with that power comes the, you know, the responsibility of respecting that relationship and, uh, and understanding when and how to leverage that relationship. So talk about what made you jump on the mobile bandwagon so early. I mean, what did you see in it that, that others didn't for so long and many still haven't? You know, it, it surprises me that more people haven't jumped on board. To me, it was really just an obvious extension of anybody trying to do business or anybody trying to convey a message. When I saw people really walking around with these mini computers in their pockets, um, I mean, my first instinct was it was obvious. Um, I mean, we, we need to leverage that in a way that, that's meaningful for business. Um, I really got excited about it because I've, I've always been in the tech world. Uh, I've always been really, really fascinated with the power of the Internet, the ability to post content on a web page and have millions of people around the entire world have access to that instantly. So as soon as I saw people carrying that kind of power in their pocket, I thought, wow, I mean, why wouldn't marketers or business people in general try to capitalize on that reach. To me, it was just obvious. It's a, there's a point between A and B, and we know that B is, is reach to everybody on their mobile device in a meaningful way. It was just a matter of really how to get there. It was a foregone conclusion for me that we'd do it. Well, it's become obvious now to everybody else. I mean, even Facebook just did this massive shift towards focusing on mobile. All the large corporations are realizing that that, that really is the, the future. If you want to reach the consumer, you, you want to reach them by their bedstand or their pocket or where their wallet is, it's going to be the mobile device. I want you to amplify one thing you said from the very beginning, that you would design a marketing campaign around one person. Because I think mobile technology brings to people's mind a very mass market kind of image they they instantly see it as a way to reach everyone and anyone in the world you know instantly and and this is actually the opposite of disruptive thinking so explain why we can't view mobile as equal to mass and and then how we need to look at it instead you know always start by thinking a mobile user is generally transactionally based think about it think about the things that you use your mobile phone for so you You'll look up directions to get to a location. Um, you look up reviews to decide what restaurant you want to eat at. Um, you'll look up phone numbers so you can call somebody. 
Um, you receive and respond to a text message. So you're not usually just surfing, browsing, or screwing around. And so mobile users are using the device to enhance or fulfill things in their lives. And we all need to buy things. We all need to communicate with people. So it, as marketers, if we can understand that we need to reach out in a way that's transactional, that uh, gives those users an opportunity to, to you know, interact with us in a way that gets the job done, that's different than a mass market appeal. And when we build our business, I always go back to what you just said there of how can I get in the heads of each one of, of my participants, each one of my consumers, everybody that wants to interact with my brand. And there are triggers or hints or data points that will give me an indication of, of who they are and what they're all about and what I can do to enhance their lives. If I'm fulfilling a need, if I'm providing purpose for a transaction, then they will want to interact with me. So if you can leverage technology in a way where you get in the heads of each of your subscribers or consumers and scale that in a way where you're doing that a million times to a million of your subscribers or consumers, um, now you've built something that's impactful and, and really meaningful for everybody. See if you can make this uh, more tangible for us. Give us a few examples of businesses that you feel demonstrate this uh, effective disruptive marketing through mobile technology. I mean, how can small businesses use mobile marketing? Give us some examples of companies that are using mobile marketing to drive sales. You know, we're seeing right now, most of the adoption examples I would use would be large brands. Uh, you know, you see uh, Victoria's Secret does a great job of having uh, a text to uh, mobile commerce call to action. Um, you see a lot of organizations doing a really nice job with that. Groupon, I believe, did about 40% of their transactions on a mobile device last quarter. So we're seeing more and more people actually buying stuff on their phone, which is great. Um, you know, in our business, you know, we focus on uh, the small business market, the mom and pops, um, and the local franchise brands. And uh, you know, a lot of that comes down to uh, mobile marketing in general with uh, viewing menus, viewing product information, uh, more social proof, sharing videos, and, uh, and exciting information, or just creating engagement with their brand. Um, what we see is, you know, the mom and pops in particular, their competitive advantage usually revolves around creating a relationship with their customers. And the best way to create a relationship is to inform and educate and make somebody feel like they're, they're an inside part of what's happening with that business. So we have a lot of small brands that will just uh, talk about new menu items or uh, something, an idea that the chef came up with or asking people for feedback. So sending a text linking to uh, a poll or uh, uh, you know some kind of submit form to, to gather information that actually allows them to modify or update their business in a way that, uh, that really caters to their actual customer base. Walk us through this, okay? So let's say that you could pick a dry cleaner or let's say a smoothie or a yogurt shop or a car dealership. Take us from opt-in to delivery to response and transaction and revenue, okay? So just so that people can see the end-to-end -end process here. So we've developed this loyalty rewards kiosk. It's a touchscreen device that we'll put into a small business. It's, uh, it's a small tablet, usually near the point of sale. So let's use an example of a, a Dairy Queen, like a quick serve restaurant. Um, we've had great success with that brand. So, you know, we'll go out to that Dairy Queen, we'll configure and set up a campaign. And what we do is we've combined the gamification of a loyalty program, you know, buy you know, 10 burgers, get one free, uh, with the mobile marketing aspect of being able to outreach and communicate with our customers and influence their buying habits. So let's say we've got this loyalty system installed for uh, that Dairy Queen. Consumer comes in the door, walks up to order. They see this touchscreen tablet. It's got a keypad on it. And anybody that wants to participate can enter the number and participate. What I love about this is you know, loyalty systems and any sort of, of client management system should be universal and very simple to use. So grandma can key in her number um, or the most tech savvy 17-year-old uh, can do it. So uh, the grandma keys in her number. Uh, puts it into the loyalty device. It says, oh, thanks for checking in. Uh, you know, nine more check-ins so you get your free burger. She sits down, enjoys her meal, you know, has a great time, leaves the restaurant. Uh, Dairy Queen Corporate announces a brand new Blizzard flavor. And what they typically do is they'll run a multi-million dollar national campaign to bring awareness to their new flavor. 
What that local Dairy Queen can now do is with the touch of a button, send a text out to all of the people that are part of that loyalty program and announce it locally. And what that Dairy Queen can do uh, because of the timing and positioning is reach local customers that are already familiar with that location, that brand, which means they have uh, an affinity and, and engagement with that actual location and ask them to come in in a way that's most advantageous for that business. So it may be uh, a particularly slow day of the week, a uh, slow time of day, or they may have some other product that they want to sell and they're going to use that Blizzard announcement as an enticement. So uh, come in Thursday afternoon and uh, buy any meal and get our new Blizzard flavor free as a trial. So business owner sends a text out, grandma gets it on her uh, cell phone, she sees the message, doesn't have to respond or mess with it at all, didn't have to launch an app, will work on any phone made in the last 10 years. Sees it goes, ah, Dairy Queen, let's go back. So it's now disrupted her day, stopped her in her tracks, was her phone beeped at her and asked her to look at it, and I don't know anybody that has any unread text messages, um, sees that call to action, walks into the Dairy Queen store and uh, can take advantage of that offer. So we've now uh, taken that list, created a transaction, generated revenue for that small business owner. Let's just provide the listeners with a litany of ideas here, okay? So even if they don't have your system that has this custom kiosk, if they just get an opt-in where they, they have some sort of a special discount, some VIP club only, where they get to try or come in first before it's released to the general public, some reason to opt-in and they provide you with their mobile phone number, and it's explained that they can just reply with stop at any time. So it's easy, it's safe, and there's value for doing so. Give us a, a variety of things that you've seen people now that they have that permission, different things that they've done that has wowed their customers to see it as valuable, and then it's been effective for both the consumer and the business. What are a half dozen cool things you've seen businesses do that have been useful and valuable for consumers? So it's win-win. Yeah, you know, there's so many creative ways to use it. Well, we try to get away from being transactional every time we send a text. I mean, uh, as much as people love saving money and as much as they love buying stuff, um, you know, everyone can't be a discount to buy. What we'd love to see is as much interactivity as possible. It starts with, of course, harnessing the power of, of the number of smartphones that are out there these days. So I actually have a friend that owns uh, a boutique clothing store. And they sent a text out that said, uh, new shipment of specialty clothes, click the link to watch a video. And so what they did is they took a nice minute long video, um, zoomed in and showed some of, and highlighted some of the clothes and actually linked directly in that text message to that video. Now, most people that have an iPhone or an Android can watch that video instantly on their phone and get great exposure to that business instantly. So now I'm sitting in the dentist's office and I get that text. I can click the link and and, uh, and view that information uh, instantly. So um, I love the multimedia aspect of it. Slideshows, photos, uh, videos, things like that are, are all great interactivities that uh, that we can have via text. Um, of course, we talked about earlier mobile web and mobile commerce. And this is an area that's particularly exciting to us. So send a text to, uh, with a promo code, to buy something online, get free shipping or get a, a free upgrade. Uh, so directing people to a mobile commerce page or a mobile web page with more information, more details, a virtual brochure or something like that with a call to action. So it's great to get people to actually conduct the transaction on their mobile device. Um, we've actually seen in some cases, depending on holidays or things that are coming up, almost like a mobile, uh, 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 what do you call those, a goose egg or whatever they call that, where you have multiple questions that people can answer in order to have an opportunity to win a prize. So we can actually send a text out that says, hey, you know, what year was Dairy Queen founded? And if they respond with the right date, they get the next question. It says, all right, well, what about this? And if they get that question right, they get the third question. They get that question right, their next meal is free. Um, it's just a great way to engage and create branding and awareness. And you're interacting with your customer base in a way where you're more than just a purveyor product. You're, you're working with them and making it fun and playful. So uh, text to win sweepstakes, texting trivia, text to vote. So send out a text and say, we're considering our next flavor for next month at our yogurt shop. Um, reply with your favorite. Do you want uh, a chocolate pineapple um, or a strawberry mango? Go to our website to see the current voting results. So people are responding via text message and in a real time way, we can update the results on the website. And what does that do? Those people are gonna go to the website to see it's driving viewership on the website, which can also have a call to action 
or a web-based coupon of some sort. So it really comes down to getting people to respond instantly and participate and engage that business. And um, there's an endless number of creative ways to use that technology. Okay, and I think these specific examples are very helpful to um, just sort of trigger the creative juices uh, of our listeners out there so that they can see tangibly how they can do this. So as we start to wind down here a little bit, Alex, I, I do want to leave the listeners with some form of a framework so that they don't just leave this interview entertained, but they actually can take some action on this. So let's say that they want to engage the mobile marketing part of their business. They want to add that to their overall marketing wheel. What are maybe a half dozen things that they need to consider so they can start fleshing out this uh, mobile marketing strategy? What would be your framework to set somebody as a homework assignment after this interview is over to consider? Uh, you know, that's a great question. Where I always start is understanding the concept of the power consumers have to control how they're marketed to. You know, the world has changed and consumers can decide what messaging they see and what they don't. People are recording TV and skipping past commercials now, or people are uh, listening to podcasts as opposed to radio in some cases. So the first is a, is a psychological shift of understanding that the consumer is control. And if they're in control, then everybody that's going to begin this homework assignment needs to stop and understand their customers. And a lot of times, that's not hard to do. Uh, talk to them, engage them. Uh, you know, depending on your place of business, uh, you'll have a, a form or a survey or something. But you need to gather information. You need to find out what people want. Um, at the end of the day, uh, it's really about interacting and engaging your customers. And the more data you have from them, the more successful your campaign will be ultimately. The next step on the homework assignment is is to be open-minded. You know, one of the challenges we see in mobile marketing, the reason why we don't see more of it today, is it's just a, it's something that's not comfortable for most business owners now. It's not the yellow page ad you've run for 20 years that you just believe in and you know your rep Joe and he's a nice guy and so you just you keep writing that check. So you need to take a step back and be open-minded with your approach and consider new alternatives. Um, and with that comes a certain amount of fearlessness. You know I, I encourage to every business owner, uh, you know you have to take a small amount of your budget and be willing to experiment. So here's your 80% every month that you spend on something that's been consistent, works relatively well. Um, you know, you can't bank everything on something new. Take a small slice and and be risky with it. Then of course, research, time. Um, you know, what we do in our business is once a month, we actually dedicate time after hours. We get a, there's a group of us in the office, the executive management team where we'll get a bottle of scotch uh, you know, it's after hours, after the phones have stopped ringing, and we just research. We look at what's cool out there. And what's nice about that, and the reason for the scotch, is is to put yourself in a different mindset of that open-mindedness and see what's working out there. Um, look at the creative. Be playful about it. Have fun. That's how your customers want to be interacted with. They want it to be playful and fun and engaging. And when you're busy grinding your business, you're managing employees, you're counting money, you're dealing with payroll, you're dealing with cost of goods... Um, you usually don't have time to be interesting and playful and fun with your brand. And so you've got to take yourself out of that mode and invest the time to really look at what's out there. And sometimes you'll see something that really surprise you and uh, can have a lot of fun with that. So once you see some great opportunities, um, look what the experts are doing. Um, look what the competitors are doing. Uh, you know, See what else is out there. And, and this is all part of your research, doing your homework. Say, wow, I'm, I'm seeing uh, successful business owners, um, successful competitors trying these different types of things and then learn and invest the time, um, research and, uh, and, and, and learn everything you can about that product. And then um, and that's where you a little bit of the budget for investing in something risky and unproven really works out. And uh, I've tried a lot of things in my past that didn't work out so well, um, a whole lot more than the ones that did. But I'm here today because I had enough of the ones that did that paid the bills and, and helped me grow my business. So you have to keep swinging for the fences and making those investments and trying. So if you can find a systematic way to get your head out of the day-to-day, -day, um, look at what the world is doing, um, invest in educating yourself, and uh, look at what competitors are doing, make your list, take some risks, and implement some, uh, some different opportunities 
uh, you may be pleasantly surprised at, uh, at what kind of windfall you can have from that success. All right, Alex. Well, I hope everyone listening is encouraged to start their mobile marketing process. Uh, I have just one last question for you, Alex. As your parting gift, let's say, share the ultimate secret that you have for the disruptive marketing techniques that you've used for your own company, SMS Masterminds. Make us a mastermind in mobile marketing like you. What have you seen really work? You know, it's, I guess my, my parting gift or the, the, the secret is, is to be yourself, be genuine, be memorable. And at the end of the day, you have to love what you do. You have to be passionate about uh, about your own business. And if you can translate that in a direct, honest, and meaningful way to your customers, they'll love you. And so it's it's not about trickery. It's not about gimmicks. It's not about hooks. It's not about pitches. Um, just you know, have a great business. You know, really own that fact. Be direct with your customers and, and treat them like you'd want to be treated. And uh, you know, it it will have an impact and. It can really be that disruptive force. Ironically, just being straightforward, honest, and, and a, a business with integrity, I think, is, is disruptive.